Minister, uh, I want to um, welcome uh, the publication. It's been, a number of deputies have called it a technical uh, bill, and I suppose in some ways it is, but I suppose it underpins uh, a, vision, a vision for the relocation. And so, first of all, I want to acknowledge the improvement in, in services and facilities which it, which it would bring. Um, and uh, I also want to also uh, mention the child and adult mental health facilities um, that Deputy Coslow uh, mentioned earlier. Um, and anybody who has been to Grange Gorman, the, the campus uh, for DIT, will have seen how some of these, uh, the built heritage in some of uh, these former institutions can be incorporated into a very modern uh, facility. <clears throat> but I suppose the second part of the re relocation minister is what is left behind. Um, and like uh, one of our, uh, the other deputies mentioned, um, I am concerned uh, that, uh, and excited about what the opportunities are for the site in terms of the provision of housing under the local development, uh, the Land Development Agency. Uh, and I look forward to the legislation for, uh, underpinning that agency coming before the House and the, and the, the uh, Housing Committee, which, which I'm on. Uh, because I do think there's an opportunity to embed affordability and the option of affordable housing uh, in a part of the city that, de uh, that desperately needs it. But as an example of how we can use these sites right across the city to embed affordability. Now, we have talked a lot about the social impact of our housing crisis, and there's no doubt that uh, that social impact uh, is stark. It has a huge impact on the individuals' lives. But the lack of affordability also impacts on the economic life of the city. Um, you know, nearly three quarters of most multinationals' budget is spent on their staff salaries. And if you take from that, most people's salaries shouldn't be spending more than a third of their, their salary on their housing. But when you do your, your fractions, you're, you can come out with a figure of about 25% of the competitiveness or the 25% of the cost of doing business in Dublin is connected with housing in this city. And therefore, providing affordable housing is also a strong, has a strong economic argument as much as it has a social argument. And I think the potential to provide 1,200 homes on this site um, needs, to, uh, needs to reflect that, uh, that demand. We have talked about building public housing on public land in the programme for government, and I look forward to the details of this scheme uh, reflecting that and reflecting a more ambitious target than the 30 or 40 per cent, which I've uh, seen uh, mentioned previously. Because many of the people um, who, will, who could be supported in, the, in these sites, could be supported in, share, in shared accommodation, in accommodation uh, units that are supported by the state, um, but also uh, in affordable and cost rental. And I think uh, the ability to provide that on this site is a unique opportunity uh, to deliver the second part of the vision of this bill. Uh, and that is, as I say, to deliver uh, a really, really important uh, legacy on this site, um, both for social housing, for cost rental, uh, and, and, and for our affordable purchase. Uh, and I know, Minister, you have kept myself and Minister O'Brien appraised of the developments on the first part of this bill, and I hope that you and I uh, will work with him in delivering the second part of that project.